Welcome to the post show, Karen Bryan. You can call me KB, hanging out with just a couple of my best friends and a couple of the brightest games in the fight business, Mr. Anthony Lionheart Smith and Mr. Dean Thomas. We've got Megan O'Levy with us as well doing interviews, but gentlemen, I mean, it's been a full night, but what a fight. Ilya Tapura is the real deal. He is the real deal, and he, he made some serious evolution in his game in between his last two fights. We hadn't seen him since Bryce Mitchell, and I, he, he didn't do some things that I expected him to do, and he did a lot of things that I did expect. So uh, his star couldn't be brighter right now. It's an incredible performance. Yeah, it was an amazing performance. It was all inspiring. I was bummed out since my fighter lost tonight, mm -hmm. but after watching his performance, I'm inspired, and I feel great about his performance. Not only just his performance, but Josh Emmett's toughness. That was inspiring to me. Maybe it's not the funnest thing to see after we have an action-packed fight like that, to see it ending in some grappling. But if you're a Leah Tapuria, you're tired, you've been fighting for almost 25 minutes, and Josh Emmett is still throwing absolute hammers at your head, shoot a takedown, control him, use that jiu-jitsu black belt that he has. Uh, it was a master class performance. It was absolutely a schooling. And when you think about it, his maturity to know, all right, this guy is still here. He's still dangerous. I got to take I got to take him down because he's still dangerous and for such a young fighter to have that maturity the future is so bright for him I look forward to seeing what he's going to do next because I mean, I mean I've seen him fight so many different styles mm -hmm. and just be able to adapt and, and excel at beating guys in different ways. So I want to ask you something, Dean. Obviously, uh, he was very offensive tonight, but Ilya's defense in his boxing is an offensive weapon, is it not? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, so for me, people go offense is the best defense. I don't believe that. Defense is defense, and his defense was on point tonight. The way he came out and just made his reads, he was shelled up, chin was tucked, shoulders high, hands high, just making his reads. And then as the fight progressed, he allowed himself to relax a little bit because he knew what he wanted and he knew he could block the shots when he could see him a little bit better. But he came out was so defensive and so good. I mean, if I'm if I'm if I'm looking at a young fighter, I'll say, watch Ilya Taporia. He is the total package. He checks the boxes on everything going forward. Well, and in terms of evolution. We've seen him come out, be a little bit wild and crazy, throw big overhands, big hooks and, and be uber aggressive. Mm -hmm. When, when the danger factor of an opponent like Josh Emmett is in front of you, you're forced to adapt and you got to figure it out. I, I'm really impressed with his his patience, especially as Josh is thrown back. When you have the power of, uh, of Taporia and you've been putting guys down with it and, you, and you've been winning fights with that power, it, it's, it's got to be like a kid in a candy store seeing Josh Emmett throw so big and wide like that and think that you, maybe you can get in there and counter him. But he didn't. He, he sat back and he picked him apart with that jab. He really set everything up with the jab and the leg kicks. Uh, it was it's just a, a really mature performance. It's tough to do. It's, it's really hard to stay patient like and that. And what, what impressed me about that, too, was how clean his so punching clean. was. So his clean. punching was no so wasted like, energy. No wasted energy. It's like his hooks were... Everything coming out the pocket, everything straight on that needed to be straight that was round. I mean, every 90 degrees, like his angling for his punches were perfect. Well, I, th I think he owes Josh Emmett a lot, to be honest with you. Josh Emmett forced him to have to level up because he wasn't yeah. allowed to get away with the stuff that he maybe he got away with with uh, Bryce Mitchell, who's not a big power puncher like that. I, I, I really think that at some point in time, Tapuria is going to have to come back and thank Josh Emmett for, for forcing him to, to close those gaps and then have to level up. Yeah, you show me some Josh Emmett type footage. I'm going to work on my defense. Yeah, 100%. Very much. Um, OK, so at the end of the fight, we heard DC say he wouldn't be uh, outraged if Ilya's name started to get thrown into title contention conversation. So let's think about this. We know in a couple of weeks uh, we've got a major title fight coming up. Here are the featherweight rankings as they stand. We are going to have a unification title fight between Volkanovski and Yair. Rodriguez coming into this fight. Ilya was number nine. He just took out number five. So therefore, he could swap places. Guys, do you think it's outrageous to maybe get this guy within range of a title shot? Like maybe even stand by? Or I know that's too soon, but you know, is he ready? Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't see why not. I mean, I would love to see a, like an Arnold Allen matchup. Sure. Um, I would love to see a Brian Ortega matchup. But to be very honest with you, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna cry about it. Like, if you want to roll him in there, look what he just did. I, I yeah. can't. He gets whatever he wants right now. I mean, he just kind of rolled through the number five guy in the world. And obviously, I don't want to say rolled through it with, with no disrespect to Josh, but he came pretty clean out of that. Mm -hmm. Nobody gets out of a Josh Emmett fight clean. Anthony, 50-44, 50-42, 49-45. That's, I mean, that's it's a decisive dominant. win. It's dominant. 
That sounds like a, he- a high school basketball game. <laughs> I mean, he beat that, he beat that man bad. triple double. Um, but, yeah, you, you wouldn't be mad at him being in this title conversation? No, I wouldn't be mad at that, but I do. Would, I would like to see him just get a little bit more experience in the bigger fights because it, you, that never hurts. If you can get more experience in the bigger fights, especially fighting a guy like Volkanovski, I mean, that's – Volkanovski is about as good as it gets in terms of the total package. When I'm talking about the total, total, total package. So you want as much experience as you can get before you fight a guy like that. So I wouldn't be mad at Arnold Allen. Well, I, I think that Josh Emmett might be the toughest matchup in the division for Taporia, if I'm being other than the champion, obviously, uh, be, because he's he's so well-rounded. He's hard to take down. He's hard to get to. He, he's so explosive. I think that's a really difficult style for Taporia, and he just passed that test. If you look at a guy like Arnold Allen, like if, if Taporia can get a lot of takedowns, we've seen Allen kind of struggle on the outside with some of the punches. We've seen him struggle with takedowns a little bit, like. I'm not but saying I, he's going to I got one, though. Okay. Max Holloway. Max Holloway. I mean, yeah, Max, Max Holloway. and Azami are Max fighting. Max that's, Holloway. That's the ultimate test. Well, Max, right. That's what I'm saying. Like, if you could beat a guy like Max Holloway. Well, what if Max would, Holloway gets through the Korean zombie right. in Singapore? That's what I'm saying. That's, a, that's, that might that's be not great too far away. Yeah, Taporia. exactly. That's not too far. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, look at us making some deals. Look at us doing it. Um, by the way, on the same night, Anthony will be in action in Singapore as well against Ryan Spann, if you didn't hear that announcement. Well. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.